So this is the final installment in the series on the large multi-rotor propellers, and that's the testing. So what I've done is I've set up a test stand over here that includes a uh, power readout as well as a thrust reading. It gives you the applied voltage, it gives you the consumed amps and the calculated watts. The thrust reading is on this gauge right over here. Mounted on the end of the meter is a 160 kV three-phase brushless pancake motor. The motor is driven by a 50 amp ESC that I have mounted in a little cooling stand here with a fan to keep it cool when I'm running at uh, very high power levels. And ultimately this is then supplied by a 6S uh, 10 amp hour LiPo battery. Next to the setup you'll see I have a phone with a uh, decibel meter app installed and running right now. And then finally over in this corner over here I have a scale and of each blade prior to doing the testing. The one exception is that the one blade that I have, one of the, my DIY blades, is mounted on a test jig that I had constructed to allow me to do uh, various uh, angles of attack to determine what was going to be the best for the multi-rotor. It turns out that 8 degrees is just about the best for almost any of the airfoils that I've tested. And so I will weigh this as a separate blade along with a more typical hub that happens to be designed for 4 degrees. That's why I'm not running it on the test stand. But the ultimate weight here will be uh, more indicative of what the installed blade would weigh while the performance will be uh, demonstrated with the, uh, the test hub. So let's get started. The first blade is a 24 inch diameter commercial blade. I'm using this small diameter blade just to establish a, uh, a set point for a small diameter. And weight, as you can see, it's going to be the lightest of all of our blades at 85 grams. Now I'm going to install it onto the motor. Okay, now in the test, keep an eye on these three different numbers. The power used, the thrust produced, and the decibels on the phone. We're going to go up to 1500 as sort of a standard measure. Hundred and thirty eight, about two hundred and eleven, we can only get up to about twenty two hundred at two hundred and seventy watts, or thereabouts. Now the 30-inch Hobby King commercial propeller. About 120, 22 grams. Okay, let's test this one. Remember, power, thrust, and decibels. We'll go to 1500. About 110. About 165.
at about 250. Same as the last propeller, but the one that I split and elongated and otherwise is identical. As you can see, it weighs more at 185 grams. So we've added about 60 grams in weight with the splitting operation. All right, let's go. Again, 15, I'm just zeroing it with this little button push. 1500. the blades of the lightweight stressed skin DIY propeller and you can see that it weighs about 55 grams so two of them is 110 grams and a typical hub weighs about 650 grams so 110 and 50 that's a 160 gram blade Fifteen hundred. The foam core blade. Hang on one sec. And it's about 178 grams. All right. Zero it. I'd say roughly 100 watts. This is the 36 inch commercial prop. And the weight, 193. All right. 
See what? Fifteen hundred. Ninety-two, ninety-four, about a hundred and about a hundred and forty-eight. So as you can see between the different propellers, there are differences. Uh, the differences are relatively small though between both the commercial and the DIY propellers within a certain diameter. The major overwhelming difference is the diameter. And what's interesting is ultimately, despite my tremendous intelligence, Earthlings, I wasn't able to uncover any kind of mystical reason why uh, or secret about how to build a propeller better than the commercial ones. And sort of the corollary is despite their investment in uh, aerodynamic research and all the tooling that they have because they can amortize it over a bunch of different propellers, they also don't pr produce propellers that are significantly better than the ones that you can make yourself. It's really diameter rules. So the real question comes in as to whether or not you want to buy a propeller or build a propeller. The reason I'm sort of excited about the idea of building the propellers is obviously you save a lot of money. The other reason is that with the ability to build them, you can repair them. If one of the blades on that foam core blade, uh, propeller that I just showed in the last uh, example, uh, if one of them breaks, you could obviously repair it. If one of these propellers breaks, you have to buy a pair of them. So there is a real big differential in terms of the cost investment. The other thing is, if you build them, you can obviously build them to exactly the right dimension for your multi-rotor. And based on the techniques that I've shown you, it would be possible to build a propeller substantially larger. These are roughly one meter propellers. You could build a one and a half two meter propeller, just a little more sanding work and a little bit more material, but the techniques are the same. Ultimately though, you'll see that the differences, even between the different diameters, are not huge. You may gain 15, 20, 25 percent efficiency by going to a bigger propeller. And you might ask, is this really that significant? Remember though, in typical large multi-rotors like the ones that we're building, the battery weight represents something like 30 percent of the weight of the entire craft. So if you can increase the efficiency of your blades by maybe 15%, you can increase the battery weight by 50%. So the answer is yes, it is significant. Despite what I just said, uh, the improvements that I'm describing with these propellers are really just incremental improvements. If you really want to take this to the next level, uh, the only way to do that is to deal with the elephant in the corner of the room, and that is the low energy density of light lithium polymer and lithium, even lithium ion batteries. If you burn gasoline to generate electricity, you can produce as much as 20 times the amount of energy per gram as you can with the lithium batteries. And that's why to really increase duration, really increase payload, some firms are out there at this time looking at trying to introduce uh, auxiliary power units or gasoline powered generating units to improve the performance of their rotors. If you go on YouTube, you'll see a couple of these companies with their sort of prototypes and uh, a few models are on the edge of being made available. There's, there's a little bit out there. That's exactly what we're doing here. Uh, I've been working for a couple of months now on the development of a compact, high-energy, lightweight APU 
that will generate electricity based on gasoline and allow you to plug a small module onto these multi-rotors to enhance or even replace the batteries that are currently uh, incorporated in there. The advantage with that is obvious and uh, as you can tell that kind of development is really state-of-the-art and what we'll do is as soon as this has progressed a little bit further and we have a more complete module we'll show you what's involved we'll show you what we've done but also we're going to show you how we did it and in fact how you can imitate it how you can do it yourself so at this point what I'd like to do is I'd make, like to make a little appeal it's clear that what we're doing on this channel is not just sort of demonstrating little commercial products and doing reviews on them or putting marshmallows in liquid nitrogen. I mean, we might do that at some point, but the point is we're really trying to push the state of the art and uniquely what we're trying to do is show you how it's done and how you can do it. And if you like that approach, then what I'm going to ask you to do is please subscribe to the channel, link to the channel, help us to grow this channel much larger than it is now so that we can continue to cover topics like this, multi-rotors, lasers, pyrotechnics, Whatever we're covering, we're going to cover with that same approach. In any case, this was a lot of fun, and uh, I hope you enjoyed it. I hope it was helpful, and I wish you a very good day.